Hi, I'm Doug McKenzie, and welcome to another episode of The Fintech Show. This week, we're tackling the issue that's on everyone's mind, security. Front and center is Link11, who specialize in DDoS security. We'll be looking at their solutions and investigating how banks and fintechs alike are protecting themselves from error and attack. And we'll be getting insights from AIB and Metrobank. So firstly, Ali Patterson headed to Frankfurt to sit down with Link11's Managing Director, Mark Wilczek. Preventing cybercrime is one of the biggest challenges facing banks right now. What could they be doing more to really protect their customers? You know, unfortunately, there is no simple answer to that question. There is no such thing as a silver bullet that kind of solves all possible problems under the sun. But obviously, banks need to take a number of precautions in order to safeguard their clients and their and the data, which includes multiple components. Um, I guess banks are very well advised to take a 360 degree kind of view on their IT estate, starting with um, encrypting data, for instance, at rest, in motion, or in, in process. But over and beyond just encrypting data, it also has to do with making sure the perimeter is safe, you know, including uh, putting firewall technology in place, for instance, and also you know, seriously thinking about DDoS mitigation because that's obviously one of the you know, very pressing uh, trends um, that is kind of growing and where there is also uh, a need for action. We just break that down a little bit further. So let's talk about this sort of 360 degree view mm -hmm. when it comes to security. That's often a phrase used for customer experience. What does that mean from a, from a security perspective? Right. What I actually mean by that is to you know thoroughly analyzing the IT landscape. You know, and what we've been observing is that IT landscapes are getting more complicated. You know, the days when basically all IT was stored on premise, these days are gone. You know, landscapes are getting far more fragmented with you know, IT systems that reside in public cloud, some stuff that might reside in private cloud, stuff that might reside still on premise. So the landscape is just getting a little bit more complex and fragmented. And then I believe it's also very important to take a full view on the entire IT stack, starting from infrastructure, network, physical security, all the way up to databases, middleware, and uh, and applications. That's what I basically mean by taking the 360 degree view, comprising the entire IT landscape, but also the entire IT stack. Metro Bank's CIO, Martin Atkinson, dished out on what he felt was keeping bankers up at night in 2018. Unsurprisingly, security was at the top of the list. I'd say the first one is cybersecurity. Um, there doesn't seem to be a day goes by at the moment where we don't have a data breach at either someone within a financial service ecosystem, whether it's a supplier, whether it's the bank themselves. And as a CIO, we've got to obsess about maintaining an, an impenetrable boundary um, to make sure that the kind of rogue actors can't actually get access. I think the second thing is just resiliency at large. We've seen some relatively high profile IT incidents and resiliency issues over the last couple of weeks and then that's had a very profound impact in people's confidence in the banks and I think as CIOs our sole role sometimes is just making sure that we offer and deliver a scalable um, set of technology services to our customers and colleagues. The increasing regulation that you see through things like GDPR uh, and also PSD2 making it very clear that the accountability is on the financial service organisations to make sure that we honour our commitments to customers in terms of offering a safe and secure platform for them to financially transact with. Meanwhile in Dublin, I sat down with Fergal Coven, Head of Digital Products and Payments at AIB. We spoke about the challenges that come with customer expectations as banks try to keep up with the pace of change while still staying secure. So Fergal, what have been some of the biggest challenges and at least opportunities facing the financial institutions currently? Well, I suppose the primary feature of today's environment is the consumer and how the consumer has changed in the digital world. I think one of the big features of the consumer is how connected they are and how connected they are becoming. I think in general, each of us individually are on average five IP addresses. Our connectivity is growing by 2025. We're expected to be 20 IP addresses. So our connectivity into the outside world is dramatically increasing. Our volume of interactions with the digital world is increasing. So if we look at the consumer, what that's meaning today, they're becoming hyper-connected, hyper-informed. Their expectations are being set by Google and Amazon experiences and Uber experiences. They're, they're patients. They are the now generation. They want instant gratification. So that's a very challenging consumer to deal with. So I, I always remind myself of Bill Gates' comment from 20 years ago where he said, the world needs banking, it doesn't need banks. So it is 20 years ago that was said, banks are still around, but I think the essence of his meaning is 
the banking service is going to be very important, but it won't necessarily be delivered to the consumer through banks. So that's really challenging for banks to understand their relevance and how to position their services with, with consumers. So the whole concept of this integrated networked economy where customers are serviced by organisations who address their needs um, is very different than the traditional kind of linear product manufacturer who addresses the consumer needs. So banks have to figure out what role they're going to play in that consumer experience in the future. Just what should the banks be looking out for? We were interested to find out what the most imminent cyber threats really were. What are the most dangerous cyber threats out there affecting banks today? Well, there are a number of different cyber threats out there, um, with, for instance, DDoS mitigation being one of them, a trend that is increasing in frequency but also in severity. And we've been observing um, a very substantial increase of, of threats. We're monitoring and analyzing cyber threats around the globe. And what we've been seeing is that these attacks are getting bigger, way, way bigger and bigger, and they also heavily increase in frequency. Why do you think they're getting bigger? I mean, I, I'm just to take it, what's sort of the motivation behind the DDoS attack? Right. So first of all, what's important to understand is that because of the whole digitization, organizations heavily increase their dependency on IT, right? Um, outages have never been great, it's always been painful when, when they occurred, but you know the fundamental difference is that there is now a very severe revenue impact, for instance. Reputation is at risk because if services are down, or even if they're slow to respond, you know, things go viral at lightning speed. And organizations put themselves at risk because of that increasing dependency on the availability of their IT infrastructure. That's the first thing to begin with. But on the other hand, what we've also been observing is, for instance, due to the IoT, the Internet of Things, you know, billions and billions of devices are actually getting connected to the Internet. And obviously, you know, some bad guys can possibly abuse these devices as so-called demons to produce an unprecedented amount of malicious IP traffic that could obviously, at the end of the day, you know, present very severe risks for organization because ultimately when these attacks occur, uh, anti-IT landscapes might be unavailable. More specifically, let's take a closer look at denial of service, or DDoS attacks. How much are banks letting on when it comes to the issue? And just how can Link 11 prevent some of these attacks? Why are DDoS attacks so dangerous for financial service firms? Right. Well, because of the kind of digital trend, uh, the, the uh, dependency on the availability of IT is increasing very heavily. And you know, for most organizations, 99.9% availability is no longer good enough. Uh, they want to have um, services up and running literally 24-7 uh, around the clock and around the globe. Um, and customers really expect a seamless interaction in real time, they want to transact now and you know there's just no room for outages or you know performance issues. Customers need to interact, they, they clearly have that you know, increasing expectations and you know organizations have to get used to that otherwise customers will simply walk away. Cyber security is quite a, a massive thing at the moment. We've had things like the Equifax hacks. We haven't had a huge amount of stuff in the press around DDoS attacks. Is, is that something you think is being downplayed? Um, I think it's something that probably a lot of banks don't openly share that information. Now we do together, so some of us are members of alliances that we share information so that we can work as a collegiate to actually try and mitigate against the threat actors. Um, I think it's always there in the background. I think obviously sometimes it's a function of geopolitical movements. We've seen some relatively high profile challenges on the back of issues with Russia and the Far East. Um, from our perspective, we've always got to maintain that level of comfort around our cyber controls. It's something that we religiously obsess about and you know I am effectively accountable back to the board to ensure that we've got the right processes and controls so whilst it doesn't necessarily always play out in the industry that doesn't mean that we as a collective set of CIOs, CIOs are not obsessing about this stuff on a daily basis. How difficult is it really to balance all that data you now have on your customers in a digital world with remaining secure from you know, phishing or DDoS, you know, staying in that digital world? So uh, very is the answer. Very difficult, so I suppose there's an ever-increasing uh, threat out there, um, which is why we work with a significant number of partners to ensure the technology we have is leading state-of-the-art certified best practice technology. You can never provide any guarantees, 
really and really what, what we learn is the weak point actually is in the customer space customers letting go of their details customers social engineering phishing they are the vectors that actually result in value for fraudsters today it's the consumer weakness so really uh, in AIB and within the industry there's a lot happening in terms of new emerging vendors who are coming up with new technologies to mitigate the risk of consumer education so within AIB we've had a big focus through our websites through every communication aspect with consumers to really alert them and make them hyper aware of the risks posed to them unwittingly giving access to their data through conceding their own online banking credentials so fortunately We've had very good performance to date, but it's something we have to be constantly vigilant about and constantly looking at the emerging technologies and indeed the lessons other banks are learning before we learn the hard way. Let's talk a little bit about your solution. Mm -hmm. What are some of the most important aspects of it when it comes to DDoS protection? How do you really enable banks to again, prevent and mitigate DDoS attacks? Right. So it's important to understand that you know, Link 11 provides a global cloud infrastructure. We have a cloud-based service um, that is deployed across nine different data centers globally. So we, we're talking about data centers in the EMEA, we're having data centers in APAC and also data centers in the US in order to be able to deliver a global service model which works around the globe and around the clock in a 24-7 fashion. And that cloud-based platform allows us to run multiple services on that infrastructure with you know, DDoS mitigation being kind of the flagship service. And with that flagship service, that DDoS mitigation service, we enable our customers basically to take advantage of an AI-based cloud platform that filters all incoming IP traffic through one of our scrubbing central locations, the nearest actually, to the point of origin, and to make sure that only clean and fresh and healthy IP traffic is passed through and all the bad stuff will be blocked and filtered in the cloud without our customers having to worry about anything. They don't need to have you know, local operations, they don't need to put people, processes, tools in place. You know, we take care of the environment and we enable our customers in a way that they can you know, concentrate on their cloud competence, basically on growing their digital business while we take care of running their infrastructure and safeguarding their infrastructure around the clock. So what's next for the future of security? How do you ensure that as you sort of come up to your 10th year of having systems in place that you don't fall into the trap of just building on the old and end up in a few years time like the incumbents? How, how, do, you, how do you stay current on the core? That's a really good question. It's actually very timely. I mean, you know, it seems every year it becomes harder and harder from an investment budget perspective to be able to fit all the needs in from building out new stores or responding to regulatory initiatives such as PSD2 or GDPR. And, but it's absolutely sacrosanct to make sure that we maintain that level of technology innovation advantage that we've got. And I suppose to kind of qualify, we do it in a number of ways. We've ripped out and replaced probably 75% of our core technology since the start of 2010. So we need to make sure that we maintain a level of technology relevance so that we're always within support, we're always in the right version. After everything we've talked about, your solution, how is that sort of AI-based preventative measure against DDoS attacks? What can banks be doing to better mitigate against DDoS attacks and protect their customers? Because IT landscapes are getting more complicated, um, you know, the days of you know putting hardware into one single location are gone. Um, given you know the world is getting more complicated and organizations tend to operate in multi-cloud environments. Um, there is no digital world without cloud, but at the same time, you know, it's also very important to make sure that there is a cloud-based security shield in place. Because again, putting hardware on site, protecting some of the stuff on site, is no longer sufficient. With you know increasing complexity in terms of the IT landscape, systems residing in all kinds of different clouds, what we're saying is it is absolutely essential to put a cloud-based security kind of shield in place that takes care of the entire service infrastructure, the entire service chain, whether it's going to be in public cloud, private cloud, on-site, or a combination of all of that. You know, only a cloud-based solution can basically protect the entire IT landscape. Make sure to tune into the next FinTech show when we'll be looking at customer engagement.